we we're going to 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 talk today about diagnosis and management of malignant tumors of the apple limb. So uh, I'm trying to go. Oh, so that this is my disclosure. So uh, we know that bone and soft tissue sarcomas of the upper extremity are, uh, are not so uh, are uncommon, but but it's, it's really less common than in lower limb. In general, incidence of sarcomas are five new cases every 100,000 habitants per year. So uh, it's most common the soft tissue sarcomas, the bone sarcomas. You can see the bone sarcomas as almost one every 100,000 per year. So, but if we if we focus in the upper extremity here, the most common malignant bone tumor is uh, osteosarcoma, and the most common malignant soft tissue is the undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma that we used to call it malignant fibrous toma, but now they, they changed the name, so now it's called a UPC. And in January, the survival rate for soft tissue sarcomas is 72%, and the disease-free survival is 63%. They have similar survival rates with bone sarcomas, but this is generally, and now we're going to try to speak first of the bone sarcomas. We, we're going to talk today of free bone sarcomas, that is mainly osteosarcoma, chondrosarcoma, and urine sarcoma. Why? Because the, the other cases are less common. The myeloma and lymphoma are, are mainly metropoietic, and we don't have much deal. And some cases like the UPC and fibrosarcoma are more common soft tissue. And when we speak about stage, the old stage was the Anakin stage, that it was divided between one low grade and two high grade and the uh, freeze Metz disease. But nowadays we are using the, T, you, you know, the AGCC or TNM, and it's mainly low grade, it continues to be one, but the size is, is, is becoming more important. So less than eight centimeters is one A, more than eight is, uh, is a B. And you can see that the grade is what focus. And then the, num the free stage is while there's a skip metastasis. So other bone have a metastasis. And number four is when there's a distant, uh, like pulmonary metastasis. So here you can see that when we, when we speak about bone, bone uh, soft tissue sarcomas, it's more names, it's a lot of mess, a lot of, they are changing names every five years, but the mainly focus here in this talk is going to be the fibrosarcoma, the dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance, DFSP, and differentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, UPC. I already mentioned this most common soft tissue sarcoma in the upper extremity. The liposarcoma, mainly the well differentiated, but there are other types of liposarcoma. Then the liomyosarcoma, with the small muscle and the skeletal muscle rhabdomyosarcoma. And then we're going to speak a little bit about uh, malignant perineal, you know, the nerve sheet malignant tumor, and then the synovial sarcoma and the epithelial sarcoma. Uh, and when we talk about classification, again, here they change. It used to be eight years ago that the, if it was superficial or deep was a, a risk factor, for more for deep, but now it's just the grade and the size. And, and here it's not eight centimeters, it's, it's less than five, five, 10, 10, 15, and more than 15. So the, the big deal here in soft tissue is it's, it's, it's bigger than five. You, you can see the grade, you can, uh, it's also important, but the size here is very important. So when it's going to, we're going to focus on how big is going to be a soft tissue tumor if you have to send it to a, a specialist. This is the same that we focused last week. It's very important in the duration, the symptoms, pain, the rate of growth is very important, the presence of mass, family history like neurofibromatosis or some osteochondromatosis, some uh, disease that are. Uh, generally uh, by family history, physical examination, the mass, the range of motion. Usually we have to focus if the pathologic fracture is no trauma association. And now we're going to speak about the imaging. Here it's very important. Uh, nowadays it's very important the x-ray, even now. So 
mainly the tumors, the malignant tumors in bone are located in metaphysis. So you can see here in this picture that is in the epiphysis. It's not so common a malignant tumor there. Although it's close in the physis, it's, 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 uh, it's not so common to have a malignant tumor there. There, if the lesion is well demarcated like here with, with some, you, you can see a rim of a sclerosis, it, it telling me that it's growing slowly. So it's not so, so irritated to a malignant tumor. If it's a, if it like here that this uh, erosion of the cortical, uh, it's, uh, it could uh, expand to, to the soft tissue is going to indicate it more an aggressive tumor. So this is a, a benign tumor, it's a clearly a malignant tumor. So other, other problems you can see here, the cortical destruction, you can uh, listen to some name like the Codman triangle, where the, it's a reaction of the periosteum when it's growing too fast. So the bone don't have any time to, to make a sclerosis. Or if you see a soft tissue mass and you can, uh, if you have calcification, we list, uh, I, I give you uh, last, with some tumors, benign tumor like uh, myositis ossificans, osteochondromatosis, or synovials, you know that they can be a calcification, but in soft tissue sarcomas, you, uh, it's, uh, if you have a calcification, you, you have to think about synovial sarcomas. So it's very common that they have calcification. So that's, if you have a calcification, you, you, you can be aware. You, you have to stop there and ask or make a biopsy there. The CT is mainly to evaluate margination, calcification, or disruption of the cortex, and the bone scan. If you have a pain and you don't, you don't have. It, it's not so common. It's, the bone scan is very helpful in this case because it could show. You can see here a bone scan. This is a, a tumor, a malignant tumor in the clavicle. Sometimes. It localizes the tumor or it, it gives you some advantage when you, you don't know where to, you know, it's very uh, not so focused pain. And, the, the, and sometimes the pain is in the shoulder, but the tumor is in the clavicle or something like that. The bone scan is a very useful, it's very good to adjust for a bone scan. Then the PET is, is very complex. It's, you, you need to have a, a diagnosis of sarcoma but it's mainly to, to have a, you know, to staging. And the ultrasound, it, 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 in soft tissue, you, you can give it the size, the depth, and, and the composition. As soft, ultrasound is the disadvantage that it depends on the operator. Sometimes the images are not so well interpreted, but it's, it's helpful for some tumors. And obviously the gold stand here is the MRI. Never forget the X-ray is uh, because here we have the extent of, of tissue, the extension of the bone tumor inside the bone to medullary. You, we, you can have a contrast like you can see that picture and it's uh, we use here gadolinium for the soft tissue or, or the bone sarcoma. So MRI is very, it's very important here. This is the same slide last week because the biopsy is how we determine the tumor. Uh, the gold standard is the core needle because we have tissue. We need tissue to have diagnosis. Uh, it's not enough with cell. Never do an open incisional biopsy like this. It used to be, you know, longitudinal, never like this because we have to take all this tissue. And it's very strange to have an excisional biopsy only when you're sure that you are benign and here you're, you're thinking that it could be malignant. So previously uh, uh, for open biopsy, you need a, uh, an MRI. So the gold standard again is the cone needle. And when we spoke last week of treatment, we spoke about surgical margins. We discussed in traditional marginal, in sarcomas, we have two types or wide or radical. You, you, you're not, you need to take the entire tumor with a cuff of normal tissue or the entire compartment. It's not possible to, to perform an interlesion or marginal. And when we speak about we malignant bone tumors, the, you, you must remove the whole tumor. But you can have three different scenarios. You, you can have wide resection alone with no 
chemo or radiotherapy. That's mainly for the chondrosarcoma because there are very slow tumors, how they grow. So the chemo radiation don't work in that tumors. The adamantinoma or the parasteosteosarcoma low grade. I'm not mentioning it because adamantinoma is mainly in the lower extremity. Parasteosteosarcoma is very strange in the upper extremity. Then you can have a resection plus chemo and it's the treatment of choice in the osteosarcoma, urosarcoma, mainly in those in the UPC of the bone also, but this here we're focusing in, in these most common tumors. And you can give radiation therapy, the, the most important is the unisarcoma. You, you have the chordoma there, that is the tumor mainly in the spine, it's not here in, in the upper limb, but, and you can treat like lymphoma or some vascular or plasmocytoma with radiation. But mainly here you can see the, the, the most important tumor, tumor, more common chondrosarcoma, just resection, chemotherapy for and resection for osteosarcoma urine. And the urine you can you can have chemotherapy and resection plus radiation or chemotherapy and radiation. It, 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 we're going to discuss that in a minute. While, while, we, while we spoke malignant soft tissue, there's only wide resection alone for small, very uh, superficial, or if it's a high grade sarcoma that you can assure you're going to have normal tissue around. But you need to be sure that it's only in low grade or very superficial, or you can have a, a normal scarf of normal tissue. And then it's the wide resection with radiation, external beam radiation. And there is the discussion. It's mainly to minimize the risk of local failure. It's not going to improve the survival. It's just to, to minimize the local failure. So the local recurrence rate. And you can give it previously, or you can give you after surgery. If you give it previously, you have more one healing problems you have lower risk of long-term fibrosis, but you give, you, you give less doses. And, but if you give it post-operative, you have to, you have lower risk of one healing pro complication, but you have more fibrosis and you need more doses. Even nowadays, it's, it's a big discussion if previously, or it's a discussion in, mainly in, a, in our sarcoma conference. And you, you must to be sure sometimes you, you have a biopsy of a, a low grade tumor and when you take it out as a high grade and then you give radiation, you're not going to have to give radiation to a low grade. So sometimes it's, it's not so structural like the bone sarcomas. Here it's, it depends on the size, it depends, perhaps the diagnosis change when you take it out, but it's just, so you have a, some mainly the difference between previously and the complication previously or postoperative radiation. This is a paper I suggest because to read if you have time is a diagnosis and, and management of primary malignant tumors in the upper extremity and it's very helpful and you can see there the stosarcoma is the most common followed by the chondrosarcoma and then obviously the myeloma but it's a urine sarcoma as a primary bone tumor but you can see that in ages you, you're, you're expecting uh, younger, 20 years or younger, mainly osteosarcoma urine, then in, in the middle age, you, you're going, osteosarcoma is continue to be a big number, but it's growing, chondrosarcoma is a very rare urine sarcoma. And then in older patients, you're going to see mainly chondrosarcoma and obviously myeloma and lymphoma. So, so we're going to speak of these free bone tumors. Osteosarcoma is the most common primary bone malignancy. In the humerus is 10%. You can see this is more frequent in lower limb and it's between in the 20 and 40 years of age. If it's older, there are some uh, urine proxistin paget disease or some radiation therapy and it's pain, swelling, and it's a typical, you know, here at osteosarcoma. And uh, some patients have a pathologic fracture as a diagnosis and lung metastasis is poor prognosis. As I told you before, 90% of lesions are metaphysical, but obviously it invades the epiphysis and the diaphysis. There is a 
this sunburst pattern does it uh, the, the cortical is disrupt and there's a radio ossification. You can see here how the destructive pattern here in the proximal humerus and here in the diaphysis. And you have the Kahneman triangle that I, I, I mentioned before. This is an example of the osteosarcoma of the scapula. And you can see the how the destruction of the scapula and the growth in the soft tissue. And just to mention, the low grade osteosarcoma is very restrained in the upper limb. It's mainly in the distal femur. Uh, it's uh, never involved the intramedullary and it's no chemo. Just to you know, that's just the resection, but it's very strange in here in the upper limb. Uh, what is treatment I mentioned before? We give neadjuvant chemotherapy, then surgical resection, and then neadjuvant chemotherapy again, then some agents for chemotherapy. And this is very important. Good, good response is 90%. So more than 90%, we continue with the same chemo, but it's going to be a good response and with, with greater survival. Local recurrence is uh, between six and eight. And if you have a metastasis, the, it's recommended to resect it because it, it increases survival. Specifically, it's, it's only one metastasis. Here is a picture, pre-chemo, you see the big mass and here post-chemo, how it's shrinked and it's uh, how it's, before surgery. So it's very important chemo here. Some cases uh, so you, you can have a location like here in the clavicle, you, you can see the bone scan there. And just here is just resection. Here is a seven year uh, a young boy here with a big mass, a big mass and we, the, the resection. And here we use mainly, uh, here's a biological reconstruction. You can see that the humerus is very small. So we made a step cut, this is the allograph. And this is some other cases, 15 years. And you can see how we reconstruct the shoulder here and five years to follow up with the, nowadays we're putting double plates to have a less risk of non-union. You can see in the wrist, here the disruption, you can see here, the, the sex here for out of a distal radio graph. But mainly now we only put in the upper limb here uh, osteoticular allograph in the in the wrist. And now we're putting APC because there was a, a lot of arthritis there. And this is a case here. We can we can here's the allograph here uh, to here, double plate and the prosthesis. The the best allograph here for us is intercalary allograph, as you can see here. This is pre-chemo, post-chemo, the reconstruction here and how it heals both osteotomies because here you maintain both, uh, uh, you know, osteoticular joints. So it's, it's the best of all. But now in some cases like this, a pathologic fracture, all the whole bone is affected. We need to put a prosthesis, a whole prosthesis of, of the humor. So it depends, we can use, well, uh, Mainly nowadays, more than 95% we preserve the limb, but even now there's a 4% that we have to perform a desarticulation or amputation of the upper limb. So now you in sarcoma, it's, uh, you can see the tempers, five, 10% are around the shoulder. Uh, this very, the numbers are very small in comparison with the osteosarcoma. There's a prediction of male, there's pain, swelling, and the presence of mass, but it's very important that it could be a fever uh, in, in almost one third of patients. So it's, it could be a fever, there could be certain alterations in the lab. So, but you can, you can, you must think of you in sarcoma, if you, there's a, a mass in some place, you can see here in the clavicle, here in the scapula. And it's very similar, the, the, the X-ray with the, Osteosarcoma. The only difference you can have here, the onion skin here, that you can have periosteal reactions like the onion skin. It's typically from urine, but you know you can have a big mass here. This is a, a urine of the scapula, big mass. Even here, you uh, you, you can see how the expansion. But they have more expansion in the soft tissue of osteosarcoma. Even I, I show you big cases, urine sarcoma is more expanded to the soft tissue. 
you in really increase survival with the chemo. The chemo is very important in you in, but there is a main difference. It, that, it's the same, you, you need to give chemo and then local control with surgery or rare therapy and then chemo again. But here in you in, you need 100% of tumor necrosis. If, if you take out the tumor and you have less than 100%, you need to add rare therapy. So you, you, you can use both resection or rare therapy. But the, the preferred method is surgical resection. But again, if you have less than 100% of necrosis, you need to add uh, rare therapy. That's very difficult for us because we need to know uh, what kind of reconstruction we're going to perform if you're going to give uh, rare therapy afterwards. But yeah, because we have a lot of problems with rare therapy afterwards. But, and in some patients younger than six, rare therapy is, is not allowed because the big risk of second malignancy. So you, you have to balance that. So the survival is, is less, a little bit less than astrosarcoma and obviously very low if there is metastatic disease. Here are some cases, urine sarcoma, you can see here in the clavicle here, always we take out, you here, here's the piece with the skin where we perform the biopsy, uh, urine sarcoma of the scapula. Uh, the same case, uh, some cases that we can, because there are very small kits, we try to perform in small kits uh, osteoticograph because sometimes there are not so small prostheses. We, we need to do a step cut. You can see good healing here. Here's a case, uh, you hear the ulna, here pre-chemo, post-chemo, how it, you know, the big mass here and how it shrinks. You can see how it, the classification here. And this is a APC of the ulna and the elbow here with a good function after some years. Some very difficult cases because there, there are some extent, some that are very small kids. Uh, here it's pre-chemo, after chemo, we, we, we try to preserve both uh, articular joints here. And here it's very, you see it's small. We, we need to put some tension band wires there. Here, the X-ray here, and it's a good healing and we preserve both physis to grow. You can see here the screw is parallel here and it's going up. So the, some strange case, we have to focus how to reconstruct. This is a very uh, tiny girl that we have only this, this, since 2010, we're using navigation to perform the resection of the bone tumors. And it's very helpful because in this case, we are allowed to just maintain two centimeters of the bone. So we put a TB allograph inside this bone and we put some screws here and how you heal and we perform an APC. And some, sometimes you have to find different solutions, uh, but we can use in this case that we, do, we see that in the chemo, there's no shrinkage here, that is going to be a bad necrosis. We just use a prosthesis because uh, it's better if you're going to give her a therapy. But you can see here a prosthesis of a resection of these tumors and a good, a good function after five years. The last of the bone tumors is a chondrosarcoma that we're going to discuss here is the chondrosarcoma, mainly in adult patients, uh, you know, more than 40 years. We have three grades. The low grade is a more, now we said that it's an intermediate grade, it's the most common, and then uncommon is grade two and grade three. And then it's a different, they're different, it's very, uh, 10%, but it's a very awful tumor. And uh, there are a lot of tumors with night, uh, this patient with night pain, and 20% are incidental finding in the x-ray, and some have a pathologic fracture. So you must be aware in older patients uh, with a history of chondroma, you, can you, have, you must follow this. So this is, to how, this is a low grade, this is high grades, obviously, a low grade, there's erosion in the cortical, but it's not soft, soft tissue mass like here. Here's the destruction of the cortical with the expansion of the soft tissue. But the main difference to differentiate a low grade uh, uh, about the uh, enchondroma is the benign is the, here the endoscal, the endoscal here, scalloping and the lysis here. 
this is very obviously it's a high grade tumor, but we, we must be aware of this diagnosis in patients over 40. And the treatment, it is if a low grade, that is the most common, you can perform a cure attach or a wide resection. But if it's an intermediate or high grade or a differentiate, you, you must take it out. So you have to perform a resection. And in the, high, in the most high grade, you can give chemo, but only you remember only 10% that are differentiated to an osteosarcoma or UPC, uh, whatever, but it's very strange. That this is the worst prognosis because the survival in the low grade is more than 80% that's going down when you're going up in the grade. So remember, low grade, you can perform interleukin attach, and in the intermediate, the high grade, and they, they differentiate it, you must perform a resection. This is a, a medium grade. It's not a high grade, and we just do a resection uh, APC. This is a, 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 a medium grade of the whole humerus, and we had to take it out and, and perform uh, a prosthesis, a whole prosthesis of humerus. Uh, I, if you see our pictures, we don't use too much nails. This case is to show you why. We have a, a lot of neurons when we, are, we perform nails in the 80s and the beginning of the 90s. So we perform mainly plates. So we try to, I mentioned the intercalarographer, the best algorithm. We try to perform this ostratum is to maintain, you know, the joint here. And you can see good healing uh, in, the, in this case of uh, the algorithm here. And nowadays with navigation, it's, it's quite easy to perform these strange cuts like this. We can avoid this tumor here. And here it's when you're performing the, the how we mark the cut and we, we perform the resection here and you can see the X-ray. So navigation the last 10 years allows a, a lot of uh, to avoid to maintain more joints or more bone than we usually have to resect it. This is another case. Here's just to this is a chondrosarcoma. This is the navigation of the resection, and this is navigation how we cut the allograft. So it's the size, the same size as the bone that we take it off. And this is how the X-ray five years after surgery. So this is a chondrosarcoma, and this uh, intercalar allograft it's, it's doing fine with a very good function. And this is a, the, now we finish with bone tumor sarcomas. We're going to discuss about uh, soft tissue sarcomas. Uh, mainly you can see here, this is at all ages, UPC high highs here and how it changed in different ages. It's like, you know, like a Sudoku here, you can, but mainly you see UPC, you can see over 16 years old, younger patient with synovial sarcoma or malignant schonoma. And here, fibrosarcoma is in, the, in young patients and then in older patients. And UPC, is, 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 this is a variation of the UPC. And just to mention that rhabdomyosarcoma is mainly in younger patients. It's, it's, di it's different soft tissue sarcoma than bone sarcomas because uh, the treatment uh, we discussed is, is a resection and you can give some radiation in some cases and you can, uh, but it depends of the grade and sometimes the grade, the real grade, you don't have it until you take it out. So it's, it's difficult for us. It's just to show you what you expect and some, but it's not so stabilized the treatment in soft tissue sarcoma. The only, the only thing that we, we know we, we have to take it out. It's not like the osteosarcoma and the urine that you give chemo, surgery, chemo, or the chondrosarcoma, nothing, just resection. In soft tissue sarcoma, there are, uh, they're more common than bone tumors, but there are more kinds. So we don't have enough, enough uh, uh, knowledge to know the specific treatment of each. So it's, it's a big mess for us. So we're going to speak of UPC, is the primary soft tissue sarcoma in, in, in in the, in the lower limb, in the upper limb, but it's, it's the most common in the upper, upper extremity, obviously, it's older patients. And if, remember that the UPC could be in bone, you, you have a most eating uh, 
pattern that is extracted in the matificial or matificial, but it's sometimes it's very difficult. If you don't find osteoid, you 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 believe that is uh, UPC of the bone. But if you have a steroid of sarcoma, so it, you need a very good pathologist. But mainly we're going to speak about soft tissue. This here's the mass. You have a you, you can have hemorrhagic components there. And uh, there are some images in the MRI that you can clearly be that this is not so fat. So you, you, you must you need the biopsy here. So mainly here is the, the treatment is wide resection. Radiation, as I mentioned, is only to avoid local recurrence. Chemo is only for bone UPC. It's not uh, some proof for, for the soft tissue, but it depends the prognosis is the tumor size, as I mentioned before, the depth and the histology grade. Here, the grade in, in soft tissue sarcoma is very important. It depends if it's uh, low grade, medium grade, high grade. It, it depends the mitosis. And it, if uh, younger patients have improved survival and you can see that the survival is, is less than you in osteosarcoma so it's, it's a very difficult tumor to treat here you can see a normal calf here around the tumor you, you must take it out and here's a muscle around the tumor you, you you are not able to see the tumor if you see, here is the skin here and you can tap to take it with a normal calf all around Synovial sarcoma is the second most common here. The age is between 16 and 25. Remember the UPC is older patients. You can, you can see it, whatever, but this is very important. This is the same case. This is the, the mass here, a very tiny mass. And this two years, it grows very slow and it's near the, near the joint. You, you must be aware of a tumor that grows slowly. And sometimes it's very difficult to diagnose and it arises in deep compartments near the joints and as it says here it's a it's low growing mass so it grows you can see five centimeters to for the first bit to till the pain so so you must be aware of the slow growth tumor like this and also common so there are some calcification if there is no calcification it's a, a sign of more aggressive and poor prognosis and you, it's very difficult to dif differentiate it, this uh, mass from uh, other soft tissue mass, but it's mainly near the joint here. You can see near the elbow, but it, it could be whatever. And it usually, you know, the surrounding soft tissue structures, they displace the structure. So uh, the gadolinium could, could give some help, but it's very difficult just with the MRI to, to diagnose this, this type of tumor. The only is the growing slow and younger patients. Here, you can give wide resection. It's, uh, and, uh, it's very sensitive to radiation or adjuvant chemotherapy. Usually chemo is to, to so it's, it's, it's good for radiation chemo again together, it really decrease. If it decreases size, it's, it's a good prognosis. Obviously there are risk factors, just the age, tumor size, more than five centimeters, tumor necrosis, invasion, or whatever. And 40% will, will metastasis to the lungs. So, and to the lymph nodes again, not, not the UPC, but this tumor could go to the lymph nodes. So you can see that the survival is very similar to the UPC and the 10 survival is very low. So it's, you, you must be aware of a, a low, you know, a mass that grows slowly. This is the case I showed you before. You can see here the small mass, this two years later, and here you can see the mass in the elbow and here the resection of the mass. Lipos liposarcoma is, 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 is very common, but it's more common in the low extremity. It represents 11%. There are 16% of the tumors in the shoulder. These are older patients, not so old at the UPC. And, and there you, you can have, this, these cases, the well differentiated is more similar like a lipoma. So the trim is like wide resection, but the mixed soil, round cell, the mixed soil is like an intermediate, intermediate grade and the round cell premorphic or the differentiated are high grade. So the mainly difference you have to make with the, with the lipoma, 
some sometimes they well differentiated with the liposarcoma is very difficult to differentiate with the lipoma, but don't worry, it's the same treatment, just a resection. And if you have this difference, you can see here, fat here mixed with uh, other, other kinds of tumor, you, you, you can suspect uh, medium or high grade sarcoma if it's greater than 10 centimeters. There are some components here. You, you can see this mix, all the tumors, all these here. So this is some signs that this tumor is not a well differentiated liposarcoma lipoma, it's a high grade or, or a medium grade uh, liposarcoma. So the, remember the well differentiated, you can have a marginal wide resection and then you can put, you, you can, uh, you, you don't give radiation or chemo in this uh, well differentiated, it's more similar like lipoma, but if you, have a mixed soil run. So all the medium high grade is adjuvant radiation. In some high grade tumors, it, 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 the chemo is given, but it's not shows really big benefits. It's mainly radiation for this. Um, the poor prognosis is older patients, male and local recurrence. So then we have the malignant peripheral nourished tumors I mentioned last week that is correlated with neurofibromatosis type one. Uh, it's 10% of the soft tissue in the jowler region. And, and there's some predict, predilection for the flexor surface on form here. Uh, in, in the patients with NF1, the, the malignization could occur earlier. And it's very difficult to differentiate uh, 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 neurofibromatosis of the malignant transformation, as you can see here. This is how uh, uh, contour patient, how it's growing. And when it grows, we we suspect this, this transformation. It's very difficult to resect these tumors because it grows in the nerve sheet. So, uh, and it's, you, you need a, a biopsy and sometimes you, you have a lot of lesion because you have to resect the nerve. So it's a, a very, big problem to, to, to have these patients. Um, but you, if you have an enlarging size, invasion lesions, or uptake of gadolinium, you, you must suspect this. And the treatment is why excision is not good to respond to chemo or therapy, it's just a resection. Then we have the fibrosarcoma. The fibrosarcoma, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, the same family of the UPC. You remember the fibrous uh, uh, cells? But this is more in the between these younger patients. And there is a type like this. This is a, a fibrosarcoma uh, uh, in the children. It's, a, it's very strange. You have some deformation of the fat here, and it's low green, a painless mass, and the MRI helps. But it's, it's, you can see a mass in the fibrosarcoma, usually could be involve the bone like here. And here, the fibrosarcoma, it's very sensitive to radiation, but chemo only for local extensive disease or metastatic disease, but it's not good response. And you can, you can need, you can, if you have a good resection, you, you have a high, a high survival rate. So you need to be sure of, of a big resection. Sometimes these patients are like this patient, you need to perform an amputation to have a good free margin here. This is the case you, you can see here, the fibrosarcoma, the bone is compromised here. We take all the bone with, with the, the soft tissue mass. Sometimes the bone is not possible to maintain and you have to take it out. The dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance uh, it's a uh, it's very common in the forearm and the shoulder, and it's sixteen percent of this. You can see here that this compromised the skin here. You can see this, but the these are middle ages patients. You usually you you have painless nodules here like this, and you have changes the color because uh, it compromises the skin. You you have to take the skin, but one of the problems here that is very it's very superficial lesion, and you have to to take a lot of skin in the resection, and you need to take a lot. And here you can see if it, this is tumor, you have to.
take the whole interest mode. So, so the trend is, is very aggressive because there are some like very tiny skips that, that is described in this tumor. So you can see here in the resection that you need at, at least three centimeters. Here you have the tumor here, and you see how you resect, you, you, you make big holes in the, in the when you resect this. You need to, to take a big margin because it used to have very small skips around. Uh, the matinib is now used for this tumor. Is, uh, the translocation is found, but look, 50% of local recurrence if you have a, a, a poor margins and it's a big bad. So, so you need to big, big resection of the skin around because it's a, have a high local recurrence rate if you, you're very close to the margin. It's, it's the most, the tumor that we give more margin here. And the epithelial sarcoma is, is not so frequent. You can see it's very infrequent, but it's very common in, in the hand and forearm. And it, it's uh, it, the, the the problem that they have this this uh, tumor that you ha you have this mass. It's like the the malignization of the nerve sheet, but here in the tendon sheet, and it, it all, always involves the lymph nodes. In this tumor, we have to take the sentinel lymph node. You can see this patient with a uh, epithelial sarcoma of the thumb here, and here is a a nodule at the same time of diagnosis. You, you need to mark the nodule and you take the, the nodule that is marked. And this in this case, both this was a nodule meds. So it's very common to have a lymph node compromise in these patients. Uh, it, and here in this case, and it's very usual that an ulceration, sometimes it, it's a, it mimics some infection of the bone of the of the fingers. So there is some history of lavage and some uh, history of a lot of debridement uh, until the diagnosis of epithelial sarcoma. So there's, uh, you can see here, different appearance here. It's very common, uh, well, you know, here, ill-defined borders here, but you know, you know, you, you need to suspect this if you pop some nodules. So the treatment is wide surgical resection with a resection here, the sentinel lymph node, and it's very common, the lung metastasis when there's a lymph node involvement. So you must be aware of this and to take the lymph, always take the lymph, the sentinel lymph node, like the melanoma. The radiomyosarcoma uh, is very strange, it's, uh, but it's very common in children. There are three, three subtypes. The alveolar subtype is the most common, the upper extremity, and it's the worst prognosis. As you can see, they are here, some, some cases here. It's usually to have lung meds at the beginning of the, of, uh, of the diagnosis. The embryonal subtype is most common in children. The alveolar type is most common in adolescent. Pleomorphic subtype is more common in adults, but remember that the alveolar type, the worst type is in, is more common in the upper extremity. And as I show you here, 20% have met a diagnosis. It's here, it's a uh, enlarging painful mass. It grows really quick in young patients, and it's very sensitive to radiation and multi chemotherapy. You can see here is a, a very strange case, a pleomorphic uh, problem in sarcoma after chemo yeah, and radiation, how it shrinks and, and we can perform a, a good resection. And the last one, I'm, I'm not trying to get you too bored, leiomyosarcoma sarcoma is, a, is a 5% of soft tissue here in the shoulder and it's older patients, the median is 60 years. It's a, the, the radiographic pattern, the most eaten is very similar to the fibrous sarcoma, but there's a lysis here with the presence of a mass, or it could be just a mass with, without affection of the bone. Uh, there's no reactive sclerosis. It's, it's very, you need to perform, a, it, sometimes it's confused because of the age of, with a, a myeloma, but it really is a primary malignant tumor here, and it's not very specific. So we, we perform wide excision. Really, it's a very resistant to the chemo and the radiation, but you can give it, but it's not going, it's not a good response. And, this, and the survival rate decreases. The, the main treatment is the resection. So 
this is a, a case. You can see the components here, how proper section with the, a big uh, margin of, of, of normal tissue here to be aware of, don't have local recurrence in this case. So in summary, in the end, I know that you're bored, it's too much information. And we know that there are less frequent tumors in the upper extremity. We, we need proper imaging and tissue and proper imaging is not MRI. Proper imaging, it's a good X-ray and proper imaging is, uh, it's, uh, it, it could, if you don't have an X-ray, sometimes there's some patient with CT scans that don't give you any information and without an x-ray or MRI without x-ray, x-ray gives a lot of information for us. Um, it's crucial to have a, a, a correct diagnosis, but it's crucial to suspect diagnosis. While, last, like I, I told you before in this talk, while malignant mode tumor have well agreed upon standard treatments, malignant soft tissue, not so. We all only know that we had to take it out, that's all, and now it's not so, Common how how the standard of treatments, and it's it's uh, you must if you suspect a sarcoma you must uh, you must refer to your typical oncologist. Uh, we have we in uh, the Grimer is a very well known orthopedic oncology tumor surgery in, in Great Britain, and it's always tell if the if you have a mass bigger than a golf ball send it to an orthopedic oncologist. So you, ha you have, if it's bigger than a golf ball, that's all. And it's very important to the current gradient staging system because this guy is the treatment and that's all folks. I hope you enjoy.